In this video, I want to talk about the limits to growth archetype. This archetype is based off of the basic reinforcing or growth structure where action produces a result which influences more of the same action, resulting in a structure that typically creates exponential growth. Though in this particular situation, the result actually interacts with the limiting factor to create a slowing action, which in one manner or another actually ends up limiting the result, limits the growth of this structure. Now, the, the causal loop diagram doesn't give you a sense of, of the manner in which the slowing action actually affects the result. It could be in, in one of a couple of different ways, which I'll point out when I do the, the simulation version of this diagram. So here we have a stock and flow equivalent to this causal loop, where action produces the result and the feedback produces a reinforcing growth structure. And the factor is simply something that you can vary between 0 and 1 to control the extent to which this actually influences the action. And then there is a slowing action where the result interacts with the limiting factor. But we also have to tell it about the value of results. And as I said, there are, there are two ways that I initially perceived that, that the limiting factor could come into play. It could be a limiting factor where as the result increases, the slowing action simply begins to slow the result, though it continues to grow until it reaches some value. And then the, the, there's actually a limit beyond which it doesn't increase, or it might be a, a hard limiting factor where if the once it reaches that limiting factor, it can't go above the limiting factor. And in the simulation, this hard limit is just a variable between to switch between 0 and 1 to change whether the, the limiting factor comes into play in a, in a soft or a hard manner. And we'll see that in the simulation in just a moment. So if we simulate this with with a soft limit, in other words, hard limit equals zero, the this action factor is 0.3, and the results start out as one, and the limiting factor is 20. Notice that the the result of this structure produces the characteristic exponential growth curve until it gets to a point where it reaches the value of the limiting factor, and when that happens. Notice that the slowing action begins to come into play, reduces the action, and therefore the result begins to grow slower and slower until the, the slowing action completely inhibits any further growth, and it just sort of evens out over time. The choppy nature of this curve is because I have the time step set as 1 on purpose so that you can see the the chunky nature that that produces. And when you go and interact with this simulation, I encourage you to change the time step to 0.5 or 0.25 or 0.125 and see what kind of an impact that has on the behavior of the curve. If, the, if we look at this with a, a hard limit set up such that the limiting factor attempts to limit the results so that it never gets any greater than the limiting factor itself, you notice that it's the same exponential growth curve until it gets to a point where the result reaches the limiting factor. Then it exceeds it and comes back down very, very strikingly back down to the limit. This little spike is also the result of the simulation time step being too large. The when the time step in a simulation is too large, what happens is the calculations miss some of the important transactions that happen in the relationships between the elements. And therefore, it didn't catch the, that it was at the limiting factor right here exactly. It didn't catch it until it got to this point, and then it tried to adjust to accommodate the fact that it was already past the limiting factor. So when you interact with the simulation and you change the time step, you will notice that, that this will, in fact, bring itself back down closer and closer to this limit. 
So these are <clears throat> two ways that the I perceived that the slowing action could come into play in this structure. And it's, it's typically, I mean, if you think about it, any growing structure sooner or later has to run into a limit someplace because the, the growth requires resources. So it, it's, it's simply, you might say it's destiny for a, a reinforcing structure to run into limits. The, uh, the best approach to take is if you establish a growing structure that's doing exactly what you want it to do, the best thing is to, to go look for limits that it's going to run into before it actually gets there so that you can deal with them and get them out of the way so that it can the growth structure continue to grow. Beyond that, if, if you can't or haven't realized ahead of time how to deal with them, once you do realize that there's a limiting factor in play, the, the best approach is to try and figure out how to disconnect the limiting factor or the slowing action from the results so that it no longer hampers the, the growth of the structure. And in the course itself, in the um, external resources, I'll go ahead and put some examples of, of actual limits to growth um, structures in action so that you can go ahead and, and look at those also. Now here in this model, you can go ahead and change all of the, the, the factor, the results, the limiting factor, and the hard limit for the simulation model. You can then go ahead and simulate it. And you can also change the time settings. And I said that, you know, it would be good if you change this time step to 0 0.5, 0 0.25, or 0 0.125 and see what kind of, of impact that has on the behavior of this structure. So that's the limits to growth archetype, which you probably run into far more often than you realize. And being familiar with it and understanding the way it behaves and how to deal with it uh, can be of substantial benefit. So I hope you found this informative and valuable, and I'll see you in the next video.